This video tutorial will help solve free response question number two from the 2012 AP Chemistry exam. Let's read through the question. A sample of a pure gaseous hydrocarbon is introduced to a previously evacuated rigid one liter vessel. The pressure of the gas is 0.2 atmospheres at a temperature of 127 degrees C. Part A, calculate the number of moles of the hydrocarbon in the vessel. This is a straight up Povnert problem. You just simply have to rearrange to solve for N. So N is equal to PV over RT and substitute the values in. 0 0.2 atmospheres times 1 liter over uh, R, which is 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per Kelvin mole. And then times your temperature, of course, you must convert uh, Celsius to Kelvin. So it's 400 degrees Kelvin. And the answer is 6.09 times 10 to the negative 3 moles. Part B uh, is essentially Dalton's law of partial pressures. Some oxygen is introduced into the vessel containing the hydrocarbon. After the addition of the oxygen, the total pressure of the gas mixture is 1.4 atmospheres at the same temperature. What's the partial pressure of oxygen? Well, remember, we were told that the initial pressure of the unknown hydrocarbon was, one point, well, sorry, was 0 0.2 atmospheres. After the oxygen is introduced, it's, uh, the total pressure is 1.4 atmospheres. So what's the partial pressure of oxygen? Very simply, the total pressure, 1.4 atmospheres, minus the initial pressure of the uh, hydrocarbon. So the pressure of the oxygen is 1.2 atmospheres. Parts C and D uh, are a little more complicated. Uh, let's read through the problem. The mixture of hydrocarbon and oxygen is sparked so that a complete combustion reaction occurs, meaning that there's no limiting reactant scenario. Producing carbon dioxide and water vapor, the partial pressures of these gases are 0.6 atmospheres for carbon dioxide and 0.8 atmospheres for water vapor. There is O2 remaining, um, so uh, all of the hydrocarbon has been consumed. So, Part C says, using the partial pressures of carbon dioxide and water vapor to calculate, the, to calculate the partial pressure of oxygen consumed in the combustion. So how much oxygen was consumed? Well, remember, in an ideal gas, um, partial pressures also reflect mole ratios. So we can use the partial pressures of the two product gases, CO2 and H2O, and convert them to uh, atmospheres of oxygen uh, based on the mole ratios that would be required. So here, here's what I mean. Let's take the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, 0 0.6 atmospheres of CO2. And for uh, CO2 to be uh, produced, notice you have two oxygens in CO2 and two oxygens, of course, oxygen atoms in uh, a diatomic molecule of oxygen. So the mole ratio required would simply be uh, one oxygen molecule for every one CO2. So the, the partial pressure of oxygen from uh, carbon dioxide conversion is 0 0.6 atmospheres. Now for water, it's a little different. Uh, the uh, partial pressure of the water vapor in the product was 0 0.8 atmospheres. And in this case, notice there's only one oxygen atom uh, in water coming from two uh, oxygen atoms in um, in the oxygen molecule. So you would need a two to one mole ratio. So here's the way you set this up. 0 0.8 atmospheres times two waters would be produced for every one oxygen molecule. I'm sorry, I messed that up um, because that's atmospheres of H2O. Uh, so it would be the inverse of that, uh, times one oxygen molecule for every two H2Os. So the answer here is 0 0.4 atmospheres of oxygen. So both of these are of oxygen. So the sum total of uh, the partial pressure of oxygen is 1.0 atmospheres of O2. And that's the answer for that part. Now you could do part uh, C, sort of an old school method, but it's much longer and much slower. Uh, for example, you would calculate the number of moles of both water vapor and carbon dioxide gas products based on Povnert. You'd convert those number of moles of oxygen gas to, um, sorry, moles of, of uh, carbon dioxide and water product gas to moles of oxygen gas, sum up those total number of moles of oxygen gas, and then Povnert that number of oxygen moles to get the pressure 
uh, but you'd do all of that work to end up with the same, uh, the same answer, one atmosphere of water, which is again just based on Dalton's law of partial pressures, which reflects mole ratios in an ideal gas. So part D asks, on the basis of your answers above, uh, the partial pressures of uh, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and uh, the initial uh, unknown hydrocarbon, write the balanced chemical equation for the combustion reaction. So I've written here uh, the partial pressures that we have calculated of all of the reactants and product gases. And if you notice, as we've mentioned, the partial pressures reflect mole ratios in an ideal gas. And so if we simplify this and, uh, and divide by the lowest number is the way we typically do it, we have a mole ratio here. So we're dividing every number here by 0 0.2. Okay, uh, you end up with 1 to 5 to 3 to 4. And those are the mole ratios that go in the balanced chemical equation. So you can just substitute those in. It's a 4 here, a 3, a 5, and a 1, which you don't need to fill in, but we'll write it anyway. Now, again, there is a slow way to do this. You can calculate the number of moles of carbon dioxide and water vapor product using PVNERT, PV over RT equals N. And from that, convert to the number of moles of carbon and hydrogen atoms. Uh, then you'd know an empirical formula of the hydrocarbon, uh, which would be, um, which would be uh, 3 to 8, roughly. And then you could balance the equation from there. But that's a much slower method. It's much quicker to remember the fact that partial pressures reflect mole ratios in an ideal gas. Part D question also asks you to determine the formula of the hydrocarbon. So we've balanced the equation, and notice we've got three carbon atoms, and we've got eight uh, hydrogen atoms. The oxygen in CO2 and H2O, of course, comes from atmospheric oxygen. So uh, the, mole, the, the atomic ratio in the unknown hydrocarbon is C3H8. Part E of this question asks you to calculate the mass of initial hydrocarbon that was combusted. So from the previous question, we know that the empirical formula of the uh, hydrocarbon was C3H8, and that's propane, so we can get to a molar mass. And from the initial uh, part A of the question, we calculate the number of moles, uh, which was 6.09 times 10 to the negative 3 uh, uh, moles. So all we need to do is take 6.09 times 10 to the negative 3 moles and multiply it by the molar mass times 44.1 grams per mole, and you'll be left with the number of grams. Moles will cross out, and you get 2.69 grams of propane that was combusted. The final part of this problem asks or, or states that as the vessel cools, droplets of water condense inside of the container. That makes sense. Predict the pH of the water in the vessel. Is it less than, equal to, or greater than 7? Well, notice one of, the prop, one of the products of the combustion of a hydrocarbon is CO2 gas. And when carbon dioxide dissolves in water vapor that's condes condensing on the walls of the container, you get carbonic acid, H2CO3, which will further dissociate into H plus and uh, the bicarbonate ion. So you've got an acidic product in solution in the droplets of water uh, as the water condenses. And so the pH, of course, is less than 7. So your answer should state the pH is less than 7 because carbon dioxide will uh, will dissolve in the condensed water vapor, forming an acidic product yielding hydrogen ions or something to that effect.